Hi and welcome back to Bandwidth Blog TV. It's a phone that needs no introduction, the Samsung Galaxy S4. We brought you a written review some time ago, right after release, but we thought we would bring you a, a video review of how it is to use it day to day. So, is Samsung's latest flagship the greatest and the best Android device there is? Do the bells and whistles detract from it being the base of its class, or does it put it on top of the mountain? Because of the slight design differences to the S3, the Galaxy S4 does feel more comfortable to hold in the hand and it fits better. Again, we have the polycarbonate shell, which doesn't exude cheapness, but it doesn't instill any confidence that it's a premium feeling device like the iPhone or the HTC One. It has a 1.6 gigahertz octa-core processor, or more accurately, a dual quad-core processor, and two gigabytes of RAM. It also has a full HD 1080p Super AMOLED screen and a 13 megapixel rear-facing camera. It runs Android 4.2 Jelly Bean, which is Google's latest version of the software, but you won't really see much of it because of Samsung's proprietary skin called TouchWiz. While we aren't really fans of TouchWiz, Samsung customers do appreciate the consistency of having it on one device and then also the next, and the design is very consistent. As usual, Samsung threw all their latest software wizardry into the flagship. First of all, there is AirView, which gives you a preview of whatever you're trying to look at, like your browser, the emails, calendar, or photo galleries, and you simply do it by hovering your finger over that part of the screen. Then there's Air Gesture, which uses the front-facing sensors to pick up the motion of your hands from top to bottom or from left to right. You can use it to browse your browser or any compatible app for that matter from top to bottom or to go between tabs on your browser if you swipe left to right. While these gimmicks do work and they are fun to play around with for a couple of days, they don't really add anything to the core experience of it being a smartphone, which is the problem. After using the device for some time, the performance does suffer a bit in certain areas, which is surprising looking at the top-notch specs um, underneath the bonnet. On occasion, the device does feel a bit sluggish or stuttery, but when you use the CPU for what it's actually meant for, for example, 3D gaming, it excels and it's flawless. The Galaxy S4 is a good smartphone with features better than anything else on offer, but the performance does suffer a bit because of those features. That being said, the device sells in its millions and it will continue to sell very well, largely because of Samsung's massive marketing campaign and also because it's become somewhat of a fashion statement. That doesn't mean that it's the best device on market though. The design is starting to feel a bit boring and the features are impractical at best. For these reasons, we would give it 8 out of 10. For the full review, check out bandwidthblog.com.